Hello and welcome to Chord Melody on Guitar, Part 3. In previous sessions we've looked at the C6 diminished scale and we found that when the scale is harmonised in thirds it produces a series of C6 chords alternating with B diminished chords. We've also discovered that when we delved a little bit further and investigated some of the unique properties of the diminished chord is that this B diminished chord could function as a G7 flat 9. In this session we're going to look at what else can we do with what we already know. The legendary French jazz violinist Stefan Grappelli often referred to squeezing the lemon and he was referring here to getting as much juice as you possibly can out of each note and I'd like to borrow this concept from Stefan and apply it to our work here in chord melody on guitar. You see, with the really masterful players, it's not really how much information they know. It's rather what they can do with the information they already know. So here we go, off to squeeze the lemon. The first thing we're going to do is have a look at the relationship between C6 and its relative minor. Let's have a look at the notes in a C6 chord. C, E, G. A. In the key of C, to find the relative minor, we simply go to chord 6 in the harmonised scale. Chord 6 in the key of C is A minor. A minor is the relative minor to C. Now let's see what happens when we take our music detective work one step further and compare the notes in an A minor 7th chord with that of the notes of a C6 chord. The A minor 7th chord is spelt A, C, E, G. The C6 chord is spelt C, E, G, A. As you can see, both these chords contain exactly the same notes, just in a different order. Therefore, the shapes that we've already learnt as C6 chords could also be called A minor 7th chords. Now let's turn our attention to the B diminished chord. If you recall in our last session, we said that if we lowered any note in the diminished chord shape by one fret, we would end up with the dominant 7th chord. So if I go to the F note on string 4 at the 3rd fret, if I lower it back one fret, I end up with an E dominant 7th chord. And if I check out the notes in an E 7th chord, the notes would be E, G sharp, B and D. If I were to include that one remaining note in the diminished chord, that F note, and think of this chord now in terms of being an E 7th type chord, I would have the notes of an E7 flat 9 chord. The notes in an E7 flat 9 chord are E, G sharp, B, D, F. And now the amazing thing is, with a little bit of theoretical knowledge, we can now play that sequence that we learnt on the last session, which was C6, G7 flat 9, C6, G7 flat 9, and so on, up and down the fretboard. If we thought about it another way, or if we had a bass player play a certain note behind us, we could then play that exact same set of chord shapes physically on the guitar, but be producing the effect of an A minor 7th moving to an E7 flat 9. Now let's take all of this over to the guitar and try it all out. We'll begin with C6 moving to G7 flat 9. This was the chord sequence we practiced in the previous session. Four clicks in and four times through.
and now using exactly the same chord shapes, we're going to have the bass player play an A while you're playing the C6 shape. That will produce the sound of an A minor 7th chord. When you go to the diminished chord shape, the bass player will be playing an E, and that will produce the effect of an E7 flat 9 chord. Here's one more practice track for you, this time just bass, so you can listen to the A minor 7 moving to the E7 flat 9. Okay, that wraps it up for this session, so I do hope you got a lot out of it. 
and I look forward to catching up with you next time. Bye for now.